What is going on, Trash Talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to discuss whether or not the Detroit Lions are this year's Cincinnati Bengals. Stay tuned to find out. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, before we get into today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video as it will help us out tremendously. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, with the 2022 NFL season fast approaching, I want to discuss some of the dark horses that we have and a team that some people are very interested in but aren't willing to give them the time of day as far as maybe making a run at the playoffs, their division, the Super Bowl. I want to take a look at the Detroit Lions. I think that the Detroit Lions, the sweethearts that we have on Hard Knocks, uh, I think they have to deserve a little more credit than we're giving them currently. They have a roster that is absolutely comprised of top tier talent from years of sucking. They've been able to hold on to that talent from the draft and now have attracted some key free agents, really getting some players in key positions to really contribute at the best times and Nick I want to go through this roster with you so taking a look at the offense uh I, I see Jared Goff under center obviously we have him penned in as the starting quarterback but this trio of running backs with DeAndre Swift Jamal Williams and Justin Jackson loving that trio and then we have Amonra St. Brown DJ Chark Jamison Williams when healthy but Josh Reynolds as the wide receivers and TJ Hawkinson at tight end these are huge names and huge players for this team talk to me a little bit about what this offense can do under dan campbell yeah i mean taking a look back at how the detroit lions offense used to look you had matthew stafford at the helm but you really only had one big weapon available and that being calvin megatron johnson or kenny galladay and ever since, you know, they, they kind of moved on from Stafford and they tried to transition the way this offense looks. And especially under Dan Campbell, it seems like they have finally put an identity behind this offense with the running back position. You have DeAndre Swift, like you mentioned, but now you start to fill in these wide receiver positions with some homegrown talent in Amon St. Brown and soon to be Jamison Williams. But you bring in guys like DJ Chark who are very gifted athletes and have so much potential, but just need a new home to do that in. I believe that these guys, TJ Hawkins and DeAndre Swift, they're going to be some of the toughest guys to stop in any offense because they've been in the depths of hell. They know what losing and losing and losing feels like. And now they're starting to understand what winning feels like. And they're going to hold on to that feeling. They're going to do what it takes to keep it going, especially when Dan Campbell is preaching in their ear every single day. To me, this offense has no limits. They have so much talent. And I think Jared Goff is really going to be the question mark whether they reach those limits or they just stay middle of the pack or less. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I don't want to leave off players like Quintez Cephas and even Khalif Raymond because they have shown that they have what it takes to contribute on this offense when called upon. So those are guys that I definitely want to touch on, but we cannot stop there. We have to talk about the hogs up front. These guys are absolute wrecking machines. You start off with Taylor Decker at left tackle. Then you have Jonah Jackson at left guard, Frank Ragnow at center. Halapuli Vati Vaitai at right guard, and obviously Penny Sewell, the first round pick from last year at right tackle. Top tier talent all across the board. Absolute dogs with mean streak personalities. These guys are going to get after it, and they're going to provide a lot of protection for Jared Goff and open up holes for DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, and Justin Jackson. Nick, I, I want to get your thoughts. Is this one of the best offensive lines that we have in the NFL? You know what? I, I would say if we didn't see this offensive line last year, that yeah, they would have one of the best offensive lines in the league. But already seeing this offensive line and, and how they worked together last year, I think that they still have a lot of potential and they're gonna grow off of what they did together. But I do believe that they have some weaknesses and even in strong guys like Penny Sowell, we saw not have the best games last year. And I think that they have so much upside, but they still have a long way to go. 
No, I agree 100%. I think this is a definitely one of the best offensive lines on paper. They have to put it together and really show out this season. I want to switch things up and go to the defensive side, though, Nick. Taking a look at this defense, there are some question marks here, and I want to start on the front seven, specifically the defensive line. Obviously, answering the bell with the pass rushers. They have Romeo Aquara. They have Aiden Hutchinson. The middle of this defense, do you think Aleem McNeil and Michael Brockers can handle being the two defensive tackles in this system? I do, I do. I believe that Aleem McNeil and Michael Brockers, they, I mean, these are big 300 plus pound guys. These guys have played in the trenches for years and had a lot of success. They played alongside some of the best defensive tackles that the NFL has to offer. But playing together, being in this system, they've been here, they've worked together, and they are getting better. Now you add Aiden Hutchin next to them, I think that alleviates a lot of the pressure in the middle. You add another guy who can help in the run game. To me, this is an all-around win for this defensive line. I think that you're gonna see these guys who are not the biggest named defensive tackles take a step up and really rise to the occasion with the added help around them. I think my biggest question mark here comes at the linebacker position. Outside of the middle linebacker, I think that they are going to struggle with some athleticism because I like Alex Anzalone. I liked what he did a lot in New Orleans. But when you have Chris Board and Derek Barnes, Chris Board showed flashes while he was with Baltimore. Haven't seen much from Derek Barnes, so a little bit of a question mark there, Nick. It, what's more concerning to you, the linebacking core or the back end of this defense with the defensive backs? I'm actually going to say the defensive backs just because there's a little bit more questions around them. The linebackers, I think that they are just young guys who haven't made a name for themselves just yet. But then you look at one of the rookies they added in Malcolm Rodriguez looked extremely good in that first preseason game and on hard knocks. I think that he's going to be a big addition that we have yet to see in this defense. But Going back to these defensive backs, looking at Amani Oroarie, a guy who burst onto the scene last year, I don't know if he'll be able to repeat a lot of tape on him as a CB1. He'll stick in that role, and let's see if wide receivers are able to get past him this year. And then we see Jeff Okuda make his return from that ruptured Achilles. That's a tough injury to come back from, and I just don't know if he's going to have the same explosiveness and ability to stick on the hip of wide receivers like he used to. So these are going to be things to watch out for i just think there's a bigger question mark right now around these dbs than there is around the outside linebackers i agree 100 percent i, I want to see jeff okuda return to form we saw what he could do at ohio state i really know what he can bring to the nfl and i would like to see him and our Oro Warrior really figure it out this year as a one-two combination could be one of the best one-two cornerback combinations that we have in the nfl so, Nick, if I had to list three things about the Detroit Lions that get you super excited about what would get them to the playoffs and, and possibly even further, what are the three things that you would point out? Position groups, coaching, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to stick with players on this one. Aiden Hutchinson, first and foremost. To me, he is going to be a wrecking ball coming off that edge. He's going to bring so much energy to this defense, and I think it's just going to rub off onto the rest of the players. And then I want to take a look at the up-and-coming wide receiver in Jamison Williams. Now, we haven't seen him this year. We haven't seen him with this offense, but when you look back at what he did at Alabama last season and what he did to get them to that national championship, this guy was able to get separation on every single cornerback that he went up against, and I think that's going to translate exactly to the NFL. To me, he's going to have that same explosiveness, and he is going to be one of Jared Goff's favorite targets and a big contributor to this offense. And then lastly, I want to take a look at DeAndre Swift. I think no offense is complete unless you have a sound running game. And DeAndre Swift is the complete running back. He can do it on the ground. He can catch out of the backfield. And he's extremely hard to take down. And if you think you can hit him head on, he's a thick boy at 215. He can really hit hard. And I think that's something that's going to come into play. To me, DeAndre Swift is the ultimate guy for this offense. And I think as long as he's available to them, they have a shot at winning every Every single game yeah i would actually like to add one more and, and this is my personal note dan campbell i mean we cannot take away what this man has been able to do not only seeing him on hard knocks because that's kind of what everybody's seeing but i followed this guy since he got hired because i was a little intrigued about being selected for this position i wasn't 
necessarily sure if he had what it took to be a head coach at that time. Boy, were all of those questions put to bed last year. I saw what he got this team to buy into. I saw what he is all about. This guy is the real deal. It is very rare where you can find a coach that not only fits the culture of the city, but also can relate to players on a level that most coaches don't have an ability to do, seeing as though he was a former player himself. So Dan Campbell being that guy, and I mean, listen, we saw it on Hard Knocks, doing up-downs with his team really buys him that amount of goodwill with his players. So even if they have question marks surrounding him, they're going to buy into that system and do what Ever he says because they know he's been there and done it before but I want to hear from you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think of the Detroit Lions do you think they have what it takes to compete for the playoffs do you think they have what it takes to be this year's Cincinnati Bengals all right well that's gonna be all for now thank you all for watching be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit that notification bell that'll be all peace and love <laughs>